I'm not sure why Judy and Joy invited me. <laughs> uh, let me start with a story. And, uh, and hopefully, we'll then try and put some context uh, to that story. Because I think that uh, everything you read about uh, is normally a story of how uh, poor Africa is. And the context to this, I think, for you as artists, is uh, the fact that uh, I believe you are, not doing, you, are, you are not doing what you are doing, not only for the love of it. You are doing it because you hope that you will gain sustenance out of it. And so my story will, uh, will basically take that into context. And then uh, I'll just briefly uh, talk about uh, East Africa and the economics of East Africa and what I will then see as an opportunity uh, for yourselves. About a month ago, six weeks ago, I was talking uh, uh, to a young uh, nephew of mine. Uh, 21 years old, uh, graduated from high school, didn't make it uh, to university, and uh, struggling, and had been struggling, hadn't worked for a couple of, uh, couple of years, and uh, finally figured out uh, what uh, he needed uh, to do to basically ensure that uh, he wasn't uh, dependent on anybody and uh, would be able to provide uh, for his young wife he married after finishing his all levels at the age of 19. By 20, he was married. By 21, he had a one-year-old uh, daughter. <laughs> so he came up with a very interesting plan. He observed that in Nairobi West, and I don't know how many of you know Nairobi West, there are very many bars in Nairobi West and they tend to run for very many hours. And so he came up with a scheme. He observed that uh, people who drank ate a lot of eggs. Now, I don't know the connection <laughs> between drinking and eating eggs, but he observed that. And uh, he started a little business, supplying eggs, selling eggs between the hour of uh, 3 o'clock and eight to nine o'clock. To an extent that today, as he was telling me, he is making a net profit for himself on a daily basis after all his costs of 3,000 shillings every day. Now, if you put it in context, 3,000 shillings every day after you've paid all uh, your costs, uh, he's renting a uh, one-roomed uh, place uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Kibera. So his costs are not high in terms of maintenance. He was generating 3,000 shillings uh, a day, which is possibly about uh, 85 to 90,000 shillings uh, every month. So I asked him, so how do you uh, save your money and how much do you save? He says he saves possibly about uh, 50 uh, to 60,000 shillings uh, every month. And I uh, asked him, how many bank accounts do you have? He says he has three bank accounts. And so I asked him, so what do you consider yourself? Do you consider yourself poor or do you consider yourself uh, wealthy? Or what do you consider yourself? <coughs> and he said he considered himself uh, poor. So I asked him, why? He says, well, I'm only selling eggs in, uh, in Nairobi West. But you know, if you turn it into economic parameters, 90,000 shillings uh, a month is uh, about $1,000, if we just round it up, about $1,000. Which means that from an income point of view, he is uh, generating income for himself net of costs, and he employs two people. He's, he's generating income for himself of $12,000 a year. Kenya's GDP, if you look at it from a purchasing power parity basis, on average, if you take all the wealth of Kenya and divide it with all the, the entire population, is just under $1,000. Uh, 
Now, he considers himself uh, poor. He's generating uh, $12,000 a year. And uh, the point I made to him, and I think this is, uh, this is really uh, the point I'm trying uh, to make, I think that uh, there are opportunities out there, and you do what you do because uh, there are opportunities out there. And there are people who actually believe uh, they don't have when they actually have. And for you as artists, as performers, as, uh, as people who do things which uh, when we were young, and I recall when we were young, if you are a musician, your parents always told you, you have, uh, of uh, what you had no ambition and you are never going to make anything out of yourself. And Joy, I think you can, uh, you can relate to that. <laughs> if you are an artist, you'll possibly be told that uh, what do you think you can do with drawing? Because art was seen as drawing, <laughs> not creating. And uh, if you did anything creative, it was basically uh, perceived as, uh, as somebody uh, who is lazy, is not going anywhere, and uh, isn't going to make anything out of themselves. I have a daughter who is an artist, so I can relate uh, to all of you in terms of, uh, in terms of what you're doing and in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, what it means from an economic point of view. East Africa, from a population point of view, has a fairly large uh, population. Uh, the five countries have a population of about 150 uh, million people, uh, fairly large uh, GDP, uh, which, is, uh, which is growing. And when it's measured in uh, normal uh, terms uh, from an economic point of view, I think the perception is that uh, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, pretty poor. And so it, mean, it might mean that for people like yourselves, uh, from a creative, uh, of a creative bent, uh, that there might be nothing you can do to actually generate uh, sustenance. And I think uh, uh, my observation uh, is that uh, there is an opportunity. If you do the right thing, if you're good at what you do, and you do it extremely well. And there is an opportunity uh, to make uh, something uh, out of yourselves. I don't know how many of you uh, know uh, Elongat. Is Elongat here? You all know Elongat. How many of you know Patterson? Kamwadi. Kamwadi. Oh, Peterson. Kamwadi. And many other, many other. Uh, Kenyan uh, artists. I recall, and uh, this is going back how many years? About 20 years? Close to 10? No. Elongate is more than uh, 20 years. When I used to display his art at the branch. 15 years. I bought his first painting uh, at uh, uh, 15,000 shillings. 15 years ago. <laughs> How much would you pay for it? <laughs> How much would you pay for it today? Now? Now, today? Now, now it, it's, it's more than uh, 150,000. Easily. Maybe 300,000 to 500,000. I have, I have four of the original paintings, it is. And, and I had them valued. And I won't share the value arrived at. But all I can tell you is that uh, if I was uh, Elungat and I'd been able to hold my art that long, I'd be singing all the way to the bank. And I think that is the context in that... Uh, what you do is not easily recognized the minute you do it. Uh, it takes time, you need to be known, uh, you need to have a profile, and you need to keep at it uh, for a very long time. But uh, the fact of the matter today is that uh, despite all we say about, uh, about uh, East Africa and, uh, and the level of uh, wealth uh, amongst uh, the population, there are people who believe in, uh, in African art. 
and actually are doing a lot, not only to promote it, but also to create, uh, uh, to create a market for it. And to ensure that uh, as a consequence of uh, appreciating the creativity of people like yourselves, uh, that uh, a market is, uh, is opened up uh, to ensure that uh, the very, very good work, the very, very creative work uh, you all do uh, basically finds value in somebody's uh, mind, finds value in somebody's pocket, and finds value in somebody's, uh, in somebody's house. And uh, the important thing uh, from an economic point of view, without quoting any uh, statistics uh, in any detail, is the fact that uh, today they are close uh, to uh, five to probably seven and a half uh, thousand people who take buying art as uh, something they do all uh, the time. Now, they are doing it, one, because uh, they probably appreciate some of uh, the creative things to do. Some of them do it uh, uh, to show off and to show that uh, they have some money. But many, many actually do it uh, for purposes of, uh, of posterity, uh, to ensure that uh, the work you do is actually preserved and finds, uh, finds a place in the history of, uh, of our countries. And, uh, and I think that uh, economically, what my expectation uh, is that uh, you are in an industry which has probably been underestimated. You are in an industry which I believe uh, has a considerable opportunity and uh, which requires that uh, you persist with, uh, with what you're doing uh, to ensure that uh, you can actually build something which creates uh, a history uh, for this country. And I don't know how many of you actually uh, follow art, and again, from, uh, from a pricing point of view. There was a recent auction of uh, some art, I think, in, uh, in New York. Can anybody remember what? Uh, what? Was it the Villa, Villa Rosa? Villa Rosa. Pimsy. How much did it go for? What's the highest? Yeah, it was the, the highest. The highest went for 1.5, 1.7. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.7 after the... Uh, no, not in, not in Kenya, in New York. Oh, in New York? Yes. Oh, that was record-breaking. A hundred and what? 137 million dollars. So, and I think really the point I'm making is that uh, you have an industry which is dependent on what people feel. So I call it the feeling industry. <laughs> but uh, it's an industry which... Uh, Nast in the right way, uh, given the right uh, atmosphere and the right uh, opportunity, is actually uh, has considerable uh, potential. I'm currently involved in uh, in uh, in an activity uh, which uh, involves uh, uh, setting up an uh, an art museum, not a museum, but uh, yeah, you can call it a museum, whose aim is basically to ensure we find a place. Uh, for uh, people like yourselves uh, to display your work. Uh, not to sell it, but to display it. Then uh, hopefully when you display it, somebody will like it, your name will be known, and uh, you'll then be able uh, to actually create uh, a financial opportunity for yourself. And I believe that uh, a lot of these things uh, will begin to happen as I see more and more people in this country appreciate uh, art, appreciate the place it has to play uh, in our society, and very, very importantly, plays to the creativity and the preservation <coughs> of, uh, of our very, very uh, deeply African, uh, African culture. And uh, I believe that uh, if you do what you do well, uh, then uh, you'll be building an industry which is underestimated, uh, but which hopefully ensures that uh, you are able uh, to generate uh, considerable opportunity both for yourselves and, uh, and for this country. <coughs> now, I'd like to stop there to give other people the opportunity to talk, and then uh, we can then have a conversation.